Hello, I'm Ron Nutter and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up the Hubitat C5 with the Sylvania Outlet. Now, this video is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this video, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you're paying for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. Now let's get started. So, as you can see, we've already got it unboxed, and we've got Hubtet C5 all powered up and ready to go, and I went and got the the outlet out of the box. There's a couple of little pamphlets in it, basically telling you pretty much what we already know, that you're going to need to have it powered up. It walks you through some very basic options to do, but really it's going to vary to a degree as to the particular system you're pairing it with. But anyway, we've got this set up, and of course we'll just plug it right in here. And you can tell the light's blinking right there. So now we can shift over and let's go ahead and turn it on manually because I found generally these devices discover better when they're powered on. So we'll tap on Discover Devices and we'll tap Zigbee. And we'll see if it makes a liar out of me as to how long it takes to get discovered. And it's, okay, there we go. Oh, that was reasonably quick. And see, the light's already blinked a few times. So we will call this uh, Sylvania. Outlet. Now you can obviously rename this to whatever you want to. I'm just setting these up as just basic devices to, to get started. And we'll tap on save. Okay, it says saved. So now what we can do is we can go back over here to devices. And there's the Sylvania outlet. And to we'll get switched over here. So we'll tap on Sylvania outlet. And then we can go to here. Now, see, at this point, the, the light says it's on. Of course, it was we manually powered it on. We tap off, then it goes off. And if it ever acts like it's not doing what it's supposed to, then you can certainly tap on refresh to get a current state of the device. And as you can see from the screen, it's already confirming that the switch is off, so we will tap on. So that's reasonable quick. Now I'm going to reach over here and pull out a bulb that I just had a second ago. Oh, here we go. I need to come up with a better box on, on storing some of this. So I'm actually going to put our bulb that we just set up and helps if you turn around right with the polarized prongs. Well, no, it was it was right there because it's just a little... There we go. First time it had ever been inserted. So now what we'll do is we'll switch back over to here and we will turn on. Now it's not giving us... What I thought the power would be was giving us an actual power draw. So apparently the APIs don't support that at this point. If I go to refresh... I thought it would do it, so it's not giving us that. But hey, you know, it was, this is one of those things that was also another uh, $15 item, so we'll turn it off. And with any of these, it, it's an offer on device. Be very uh, watchful if you're trying to put anything other than like a radio or a lamp into it, because you'll want to look at the back and let me get over this to the other camera you'll want to look at your stats here on the back and I'm going to pull it over here where I can actually read it a little bit easier and it says on the bottom uh, indoor use only well that's kind of a duck is would you put one of these outside no I don't think so they they have some not so many but there are smart outlets out there that will do exactly that now it does say right here on the back max 15 amps 
personally, I would not probably go above 10 to 12. And if it's an item and where you have to really watch it, and this is where whatever you're plugging in now, if it's like a, an air cleaner that's probably not going to pull a whole lot, that's, that's probably going to be okay. But look on the device to see if it tells you, A, what it's going to pull on startup, because some devices pull a lot of current on startup, so you might end up overwhelming one of these if you try to put an appliance on it. If you want to do something like a stove, then there is a special device made for that. Again, because of the power, it's going to be a little more expensive. So look at something like that as more of a safety device. But on any devices like this, it's handy, especially when you're not at home, to be able to turn them off remotely. Of course, now that does mean with the Hubitat that you're going to have to have internet access enabled. And this is one of the beauties of the Hubitat is it does let you isolate it from the internet so it's a local control device only you'd have to get it through your wi-fi or a hardware device hard wired device on the network so for those that have a, are very concerned about security this is one of the beauties of the hubitat is it's not hooking up to the outside world now you can get it to there and we'll be showing some things such as getting uh, I think LifeX is support and there's other ones. We'll be showing that over time. But keep in mind, there is a trade-off when you do that. So just move carefully. There's one sub time. Make sure that you have your firewall at home if you are going to allow outside access. And if you already got something like Alexa, like Google Home, you're already doing it. So just make sure that your firewall firmware is up to date. And if you're using a firewall that you're not sure how to do it, Reach out to me. If I've got that one, I'll be happy to do some videos on that to show you how to set things up. I'm actually looking to do some other firewalls here in the in the coming weeks. So if there's one that I don't have, let's I'll be glad to take a look at it and see if it's one that I can easily get a hold of. And if not, we'll be doing some other videos like doing Raspberry Pi, getting that set up as firewall. So there's all sorts of things that could be done. This is the beauty of where we are in smart home technology and this is very much i think we're in what's going to be considered years from now the, the golden age because in the past years we've had a lot of things happen and this is going to be something that i think you'll get a lot of enjoyment fun with and no telling what's going to happen from here now you're going to see videos to the right or to the left of me and these are other ones that i have done or the next in the series with content that I've produced. If this video helps you or provides any value, please click on the like button, which is a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so now by clicking on subscribe and enabling notifications. We'll see you in the next video.